walking tours. And today we're going to be looking at some of the art pieces, the public art pieces in the Playhouse Village. So the Playhouse Village area was really built up around the Pasadena Playhouse, which is a stunning theater that's still in use today. And the work of art that's behind me now by local Pasadena artist Kenton Nelson celebrates the Pasadena Playhouse. What you see here is a mosaic of a cameraman and a leading lady, and then behind me, a kiosk that lists many of the names of people who were associated with the Playhouse over the years. And the names on the kiosk are really all inclusive in terms of the Playhouse. It includes actors, directors, but also production staff. And actually many of that production staff went on to build the radio, television, and movie industry in Los Angeles over the 20th century. This work of art called Stage and Cinema is part of Pasadena's public art program, which has been in place since the 1980s. So along with the brightly painted crosswalks, which you'll see all over the Playhouse Village, some of the things you're most likely to see are these utility boxes. The utility boxes were painted by a range of artists all over the Playhouse Village. And this one that you see here was done by an artist named Susan Silton. And Susan Silton has done two, two rounds of these utility boxes, one in 2011, one in 2016, where she covered the boxes with photographs and speeches or sections of speeches spoken by leaders, civil rights leaders, free speech leaders, people who were speaking out on behalf of the rights of others. And the idea behind them is that you can't have any form of culture, any form of free expression, artistic expression or otherwise without free speech. You have to have that as the bedrock of society. So these interspersed throughout the Playhouse Village underscore the fact that this area is really an area that celebrates art, celebrates culture and expression of all different kinds. This utility box is an example of a collaboration between artists. What you see here are photographs of the Pasadena area overlaid with paint by an artist named John David O'Brien and words by poet Molly Bendel. And it really speaks to the tradition in Pasadena of collaboration and all different types of artwork being represented and being celebrated in Pasadena's history. So we're standing in front of one of the Playhouse Village's newest murals. This one is by artist Wordsmith. Wordsmith has been painting murals since 2013, and this one was completed in 2019. It's one of the Playhouse Village's collaborations with a nonprofit called Beautify Earth, which has as its mission to match artists, particularly mural artists, with vacant walls, any sort of vacant space all over the city. They got started in Santa Monica and they've since spread all over the city and even beyond past Los Angeles at this point. As you can see, Wordsmith does usually a combination of images, typically a typewriter, and words in the murals. This one, not fiction, refers in particular probably to its location, which is at Roman's Bookstore, one of Pasadena's most beloved institutions and one of the hallmarks of the Playhouse Village. I see your eyes watching glass, black from the leaf litter, shadow ranch, from under the smoky sage stalks, smoky as in smell, earth green, gone silver. How you hide, goldfinch, tui, heart of one who waits and learns that she must wait again. So near to crescendo, the final act, chord, world, interrupted. In fact, no symbols clash. I am in suspended time. Everything's thicker. I feel selfish. I languish. These mockingbirds repeat a subtle chase. Who are they fooling? I want another nest in the neighborhood. Warbler, vireo, flycatcher. I wish I could. Wow. 
one. I try to remember if we've touched inadvertently, brushed a sleeve going by in a narrow hall, passed something between us more substantial than a glance or a wish. I think about touch now as an object, as if we could have collected touches in a jar or kept them like birds behind glass. What happens to flight when wings are stitched shut? To trust that our skin might turn to sky may also be a form of preservation. It is like when flying happens in dreams, when we learn to love the improbable because we find ourselves in air falling. Two, when I'm lonely, the undressed house dissolves my body to a scrap of pink camellia through the window. What if we forget how to touch? Now we stare through screens, store luck like the fourth leaf of a green weed that used to exist underfoot where our fingers might have found each other in air. I wander the rooms, one sense becomes another, tongue texts, eye buds. If only I could use my hands to wrap up my hands and send them. If you could untissue them, unribbon my wrists, open my fingers, press palm to palm, pocket them. Hold them against you. The sky is thick and heavy with clouds. A neighbor's dog barks, a yelp from a cartoon. Behind closed eyes, I see his body shudder with every bark. A car roars its presence, eager not to be ignored. Never complete silence. In this building, something always whirs, simpers. Walls moan against the weight they've borne for years. Water's ceaseless songs flush through pipes. All the sounds of the day gather together, a congregation. The refrigerator hums, reminds me, you're a body just a body, a tongue, eyes, nose, arms, legs, a body chilled by the cold, warmed by the sun, a body definite in time and place, destined one day to be a memory, conjured up by three notes on the piano or a whiff of baking bread, then laid to rest among the seeds of wild grass. I'm an apple in the pocket of this old coat of yours, honest and round. You feel me blindly with rough hands, dare take me out and examine me. The deep wine bruises, the garnet moons. What green is left reddens quickly in your palm. Twist my stem between your fingers until it snaps and then lay me down on the pine table. Split me open with your sharpest knife. Your tongue draws out each seed, dark eyes that want to grow in you. Place this slice between your lips, one bite to remember an orchard. 